Okay, and we are live. All right, so hello everyone. Maganda magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. And welcome to our special live Facebook here on Green Peace. Live po tayo ngayon dito sa Zoom at sa Facebook page ng Green Peace Philippines. And we'll just wait for more guests and more participants to join in. And to those of you who are tuned in to the Green Peace Philippines Facebook page, you can invite your friends by sharing this video. We encourage everyone, please do invite your friends, please do invite your family. The more of us that can gather around and talk about this, the better for all of us and the better for our communities, the better for the environment. So yeah, so inviting everyone to invite all your friends and all your family. My name is Chubi De Rosario and I will be your host here for today. Today, we are going to talk about green and sustainable living para po sa inyong lahat. Before we continue, since we have a lot to go over today, this is the second of a two-part roundtable discussion hosted by Greenpeace. The last one was last Monday, just two days ago. And we are here to discuss the different issues, solutions, and good practices around green and sustainable living. So again, we have so much to talk about here today, everyone. Pero una muna, we would love to hear from all of you. Please type in, please type in your comments, your suggestions. Um, taga saan ba kayo? Where are you from? Alam niyo po, one of the good takeaways that we have during this hashtag better normal, which we will be talking about as we proceed, as we move further, is that we can all connect. We can all connect from all around the country and actually even all around the globe. So it's such a beautiful time to connect during these times. So here in Zoom currently, we have 42 participants and we have people from Paranaque, from Montenlupa, from Cebu, from Quezon City, uh, Jolina from Pampanga, Mary is from Pagadian, Zamboanga. And it's just so amazing that, it's just so amazing that we all get to connect from all around the country. So I'm gonna take a look right now because of Facebook, Nat, and please feel to comment in. Please, please feel to comment in below. So I see Angelica from Zamboanga. There we go. Ayan, mag comment, comment lang po tayo. Joanne, Joanne from Antipolo. I love it. We're, we're from all around the country, and that is so amazing. We can connect. It doesn't matter if you're two miles apart or if you're 50 miles apart, 50 kilometers apart, we can still connect. We can still all connect here. Hello, Myrtle. Magandang hapon. Magandang hapon. So once again, magandang hapon po sa lahat. Here is live on Zoom and Facebook page ng Greenpeace Philippines. Once again, inviting you all to invite your friends, to invite your family, invite the people closest to you. Because today, we're going to be joined by experts. We're going to be joined by experts in the field, as well as government officials as well. And they're going to be giving their inputs, their reactions, and potential possible practices and activities we can have to help sustain and to help create greener environments para po sa ating lahat. And you know what? We would love if the conversation doesn't end here with this slide. The more people that you invite, the more friends, the more family, the more we can bring this discussion out there and we can bring these conversations out there. Okay? So we are live once again po. And before we officially start, we would like to share some reminders with all of you. Okay, so we'd like to share some reminders with all of you. So it's right here. This event is recorded. It is live on Facebook. <clears throat> and if we're not speaking, please mute yourselves to avoid any audio issues. Kindly turn on your videos when you are speaking for our speakers later on. Ngayon po sa ating mga participants, meron tayong Q&A panel. Dito sa Zoom, meron tayong Q&A panel um, for your questions. And we will do our best to address them during the event later on. A gentle reminder, especially kung nasa Zoom tayo, is wag tayo mag-type ng ating mga questions sa comment bar, okay? Uh, we have the comment bar below, below or the chat bar. So wag tayo mag-tanong doon kasi matatabunan siya ng mga chats and hindi natin siya ma-address, okay? But if you put it in the Q&A panel, we will be able to address that or do our best at least to address that later on. Uh, meron tayong raise hand feature. So isn't it amazing how we've all gone digital? So meron tayong raise hand feature to alert our moderators if you have any questions, if there are any concerns. And a reminder as well that the views and opinions expressed by the guests do not necessarily reflect the opinions of those of the organizers. Okay. So once again, everyone saying hello. Uh, hello from Lapu Lapu City. Where is Lapu? Saan ang Lapu Lapu City? I don't know where Lapu Lapu City is. But yeah, hello from Lapu Lapu City from John, from John Leonard. 
Okay, so it's wonderful to hear from all of you guys. It, it really is amazing. At alam niyo po, we would love to hear from all of you because there, there are so many wonderful topics that I feel are very important to raise during these times. No? Alam niyo po, one thing that I feel <clears throat> is that is happening during itong current normal natin is that we are experiencing change. Um, change. I think that is the one constant that is happening. There is change every other hour, every other day. And so I believe that this is the best avenue for all of us to really address this change. Because there's so many ways for us to address change. We can, we can address change in a not so healthy manner, or we can address change in a positive and progressive manner, as we will here today together with all of you. And so, everyone, we will be joined by Ms. Abigail Aguilar very shortly. She will provide an overview on this round table discussion. She is the campaign coordinator of Greenpeace Southeast Asia. Abigail, are you ready? Yes. Hello. Good okay, afternoon. Okay, everyone. Here is Abigail. Yes, good afternoon to all, to all that uh, who are uh, online and joining us uh, through Zoom and through Facebook. So welcome to the part two of Utak Verde, um, Conversations on Green and Sustainable Living. Um, this uh, is a part of a webinar series that Greenpeace Philippines is organizing during the time of COVID. Um, so maybe people are asking, maraming webinars na nangyayari ngayon, but uh, what really sets us apart from, from all the uh, being organized out there. So this uh, webinar series is uh, part of a Greenpeace uh, Philippines uh, project to highlight a better normal. Uh, we're, we're, we've been hearing about the new normal, but we think that uh, it is better that we pursue a better normal. Why? Uh, because um, uh, we think that uh, during the, this health crisis, we have seen that uh, there are the, the broken system has been exposed really uh, we are all uh, 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 shocked with what happened but at the same time and dami ring mga solution na nakikita natin on the ground uh, governments and and uh, especially in the local level at marami ring efforts ang, uh, ang ating mga citizenry uh, in order for us to move forward and uh, there are many solutions on the ground that de that need to be highlighted and that's what we want to to happen during this uh, uh, crisis hindi tayo dapat na uh, titigil natitigil o napapako da dahil sa uh, crisis. So, ang webinar series na ito ng uh, Greenpeace, uh, we call it Better Normal, ay um, uh, magde-discuss ng iba't ibang issues na malapit sa puso ng karamihan sa mga Pilipino. So, we just finished our food uh, uh, roundtable discussions uh, a month ago. It was also a series. This is the second part of the Green and Sustainable Lifestyle. And in the coming weeks, there will also be uh, uh, webinars, uh, roundtable discussions that will focus on health, on uh, peace and justice, and on uh, inspired leadership. Because as you, as I said earlier, napakaraming uh, magagandang efforts na nangyari on the ground. At yun yung mga kailangan nating um, uh, ituloy at sana ma-institutionalize before we go on to the better normal. So what is our um, uh, goal for during this uh, webinar? We are gathering different stakeholders. Um, so marami tayong uh, uh, iba't ibang participants and guests and experts. So for this particular uh, episode, we have invited uh, youth leaders uh, to tell us about their vision of a new normal. What is a vision of a better uh, reimagined city. We have also invited uh, experts in their different fields, and uh, we've also invited um, key um, government uh, representatives from the local level and from the national level because they can tell us, ito bang mga vision at mga policy recommendation is doable? Is it something that we can all work together? So, yun yung gusto natin na mapag-usapan. And by the end of this webinar, isana mapag-agrihan natin at mapakumit natin ang ating mga stakeholders to move forward. So, um, this is a two-hour um, webinar, and there will be an um, 
an interactive online poll happening uh, during the, the webinar. And we are hoping that all our participants will join us. Please join us and tell us what, what your thoughts are, your feelings. And uh, yes, and uh, thank you for joining us and hope you enjoy the conversations. Okay, thank you very much, Abby. Thank you for sharing. And I love what Abby shared, that it all starts with the vision, Hindi Puba. And the youth is the future. The youth is the present. And the youth is also the future. You are all our present and future. And everything does start with a vision. If you can picture a better future for us in your mind, then all we have to do is just reimagine it and take the proper steps and making it a potential reality. And I believe it starts with what Abigail mentioned as the campaign of Greenpeace right now, that hashtag better normal. How do we reimagine a better normal city and the hashtag better normal citizenry? You see, everyone, for the past three months, this COVID-19 pandemic has given us a glimpse of how life in our cities are linked to the environment. And we've also seen the photos of how our environment, yes, has gotten better with inactivity as well. And we've also seen how people shape the structure of their cities. Nakita rin natin ang kahalagahan ng urban mobility city spaces for people to exercise their freedom of movement and how active and vigilant citizens help us battle against the pandemic. Alam niyo po, really creativity has been such an amazing thing during this pandemic. And let's, let's look at the positive side moving forward, Hindi po ba? how creative and solution-driven people have been during these times. Napakita rin sa atin na most of our old normal, what happened in the past, is not livable or it's just not sustainable anymore. And aside from our individual actions, it is important that we look also into how our cities as a whole are able to contribute to the solutions towards green and just recovery. Alam niyo po, so earlier we wanted to hear where you were from. Now we want to hear naman, ano ang mga green or sustainable activities na ginagawa niya sa inyong mga bayan, sa inyong mga barangay, sa inyong mga cities? Or maybe, maybe, Sa inyong mga bahay, right? I mean, isn't it true that change, before we can make change happen everywhere else, it's also very, very good for change to happen within ourselves. Every single person matters. All of you, you matter definitely as an agent of change. So, ano ang mga nagagawa natin ng mga green activities, sustainable activities, kahit sa mga bahay-bahay namin, please do feel free to, please do feel free to type that down to comment. We'd love to hear from all of you. So let's take a look here at our comment section. <clears throat> okay, before we do that, <clears throat> excuse me. So before, so kaya po ngayon once again, live pa rin po tayo dito sa Greenpeace Philippines Facebook page. We are joined by a diverse group of guests na magbibigay sa atin ng suggestions at ideas para sa ating better normal. Alam niyo po, if, um, if you do have any better normal activities, you can feel free to share this with your friends and family. Feel free to share this on Facebook. Feel free to share this on social media and Instagram with a hashtag better normal. What can we do? I do believe that even just 1% incremental changes can lead to a huge change over time after one week, after two weeks. So today we're going to be joined by, loose, by youth leaders and we also have city planning and transportation experts and advocates and government officials who will help us dig into the various issues around living sustainably. And in the end, we aim to see what is an ideal city and identify steps on how we can achieve that. Again, everyone, it all starts with a vision. It all starts with a vision. If you can see it in your mind and if you can feel it, that this vision can potentially become a reality para sa iyo, para sa inyong pamilya, para sa, para sa ating bayan, then for sure that is the first step to really making it become a reality. Now this afternoon, we will focus on three key issues on green and sustainable cities. We're going to be focusing particularly on urban mobility, on green and sit on green city spaces and on active citizenry. Okay, so we are going to be focusing on those things. So let's take a look here at some of our comments. We see that Mary Grace does herb planting at home. That is amazing, herb planting. That, that is such a, an amazing way to live sustainably, to plant your own food. Plus, it's much healthier, it's much more affordable, and it's also better for our environment. Yeah, feel free to type in. Feel free to type in your comments. Feel free to type in your suggestions. Ano pa ang inyo mga ginagawa to help your family, to help yourself? I, hear, I see another one here from Maria Therese. 
growing vegetables in our small garden from seeds of vegetables and fruits I bought from the market. That's amazing. So we can actually learn from each other, Hindi Puba. Me, myself, honestly, I am here to learn. I am here to learn. I'm, I'm looking forward to, to learning from all of you. I'm already learning from, pe from you guys that are chatting here in our type box and in our chat box. So feel free to type away. And, and looking, looking to harvest soon. Isn't that exciting that when you plant, I mean, that harvesting period, when you finally get to reap, <clears throat> when you get to reap, right, the benefits of planting. Okay. So we'd love to hear from all of you. We'd love to hear from all of you on Facebook as well with regards to what are your green practices. <clears throat> now, before we proceed, let me introduce our guest for today. So today, we will be joined by youth leaders, Erica Ching. Okay. Go on. Okay. Yeah, so just checking if everything is okay. Okay, so we're going to be joined today by youth leaders, by youth leaders, Erica Ching. And Erica is a second year undergraduate student at the University of the Philippines, Suleiman, a sports science major. She dreams of being a future medical practitioner and a longtime advocate for the environment. She dreams of someday coexisting with a better earth. She is currently a member She's currently a member of the university-wide student organization, UP Bike Share, that manages a third-generation bike-sharing system within campus in the hopes of promoting cycling as a sustainable form of transportation. Okay, so here we have it. You can take a look right there at our slides. So that was Erica Ching. Now, our next youth leader is Jolina Loneza. She is a Greenpeace volunteer and an architecture graduate from Don Honorario Ventura State University. She is interested about sustainable living that deals with homesteading and biotecture through online platforms. Homesteading, biotecture, that's just, honestly, that's the first time I've heard of that. She aspires to develop city strategies and approaches that integrate and approaches that integrate green concepts into city planning and managing processes. Okay, now our next youth leader is Karen C. Now Karen grew up in Antipolo City and moved to Cebu City at the age of 16 to pursue her studies where she took three years of marine biology and later graduated filmmaking from film and from Film and Media Arts International Academy. Now focusing on her career in film and love for the natural world. She is an aspiring documentarist advocate for sustainable living, and a music enthusiast as well. Okay, so we'd like to introduce also our other issue experts. So we have Keisha Mayuga. She is an educational, an environmental planner and urban cyclist, aside from working as a transport consultant at the Asian Development Bank. She's also the founder of Life Cycles PH, a group dedicated to providing bikes to frontliners during the pandemic. She is also part of the Move as One Coalition, which continuously pushes for better public transport and safer bike infrastructure in Metro Manila. In her spare time, she helps put up pop-up <clears throat> bike lanes in different cities within the Metro. Very nice. Now, Maria Carmen Fernandez, also known as Ika, is a spatial planner and independent development consultant working on the intersections of space, culture, sustainability, government, and complex crisis, or the combined effects of environmental and human-induced disasters and vulnerabilities. Ika is one of the founding conveners of Urbanist, Urbanist MO.ph, an informal collective <clears throat> excuse me, of urban practitioners working on difficult questions in Philippine cities. Now, our next expert, <clears throat> Our next expert is Don Joseph Sebastian. He is one of the founders of Emerging Architect Studio, also known as EAST. This is a group established in 2012 with the goal of designing better human experiences. Very nice. I like the sound of that. Okay, next is Dazo Labapis, the Program Officer and Civil Society Organizations Forum Facilitator for Non-Timber Forest Products Exchange Program Asia. 
He is a licensed and registered environmental planner and is currently finishing his master's degree at the University of the Philippines. Finally, our guests from the government with us today are the Sangguniang Kambataan Federation President of Pasig City, Ms. Patricia Torres, the Sangguniang Kambataan Representative from Davao City, Kent Jones Ramos Ancajas, City Director from Department of Interior and Local Government, Makati Attorney Cherry Kanda Melojas, Head of the Public Information Office or San Juan City, Mr. Brian Helly, and Legislative Officer from the Office of Senator Ralph Recto, Ms. Cristela Castro Nuevo. Okay, so that is our panel. That is everyone joining us here today. And again, everyone, you can see the Q&A box, especially due to the Zoom. You can see the Q&A options. Please feel free to type in your questions. And as well, sa mga nasa Facebook ngayon, feel free to type in your questions sa comment section naman ng Facebook, okay? If we're in Zoom, you can type in your questions sa Q&A tab that you'll find in Zoom. If we're on Facebook, feel free to type it in in the comment section, and we will do our best to address all of these maya, maya during our open forum. Okay. <clears throat> So I believe it's almost time for us to hear from our youth. So for the time being, wait a minute, let me just pull up the screen over here. Okay. So it's Karen, Karen Shy, Karen Shy. Okay. Okay, everyone. So it is almost time for us to hear from our youth and we are very, very excited. We are very, very looking forward to hearing from them. So make yourselves ready, everyone. Okay, we'd like to hear from our very, very first speaker today, Erica King. Okay, Erica, whenever you're ready. Hi, 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 everyone. <laughs> Good afternoon. All right, um, I'm about to start. Um, so, uh, hello again. I'm Erica Ching from UP Bike Share. We are a student organization in UP Dilaman that manages a bike sharing system again to help students get to their classes faster because, well, you know, UP is a big scale of land. And we, as members of this organization, advocate for cycling as an alternative yet clean, efficient, eco friendly way of mobility. And because of that, I'd like to talk about sustainable mobility systems in um, their cities. And before we start, let me apologize for my PowerPoint because visual design isn't really my strength, but I hope it gives justice to what I'm about to say. So, um, okay. Let's start. Okay, thank you very much. Poor urban planning and car centricism of our national transport systems have always been the ills of our society and environment, as we all know. So most people who do live without cars because, well, just a small percentage of our population do have the comfort of their own cars, the former have no choice but to accept the unnecessary, emphasize unnecessary hassle and risk of traversing our roads. Next slide, please. There is still a reluctance to prioritize mass transportation, cycling, and walking, when in fact, these are the most sustainable modes of mobility. Next slide, please. So in a better normal, may more inclusive and safer roads be supported and built for widespread acceptance and awareness and of the wonders of sustainable transportation. So during this pandemic, we've seen it all. It's in the news. It's in the stories we hear of the people we know. Commuters, our dear frontliners included, have worried how to get home or how to get to work now that POVs weren't allowed to operate. Next slide, please. So most resorted to walking unimaginably long distances, even from one city to another, risking their health, their life, their safety, or bike but with the large risk of collision with other bigger vehicles, spe spe specifically motorized vehicles, because proper bike lanes and signages weren't set up. Next slide, please. So click lang lang po once yung slide. All right, as emphasized by the cute little rotating wheels on this bicycle, allow me to focus on cycling because it hits closer to home. Realizing the viability of cycling with its benefits as stated by this slide, and given the fact, well, 
that anyone can bike with enough practice. Two clicks, please. So some LGUs have started to jump on the growing bike culture by constructing protected bike lane loops. And as far as I know, the cities of San Juan, Mandaluyo, Martina, and Pasig have already started this. And hopefully, um, more LGUs could pick up the pace and eventually the rest of the country will follow. One more click, please. A large community where you can lend or borrow bike is also booming thanks to the initiative of many. So may additional bike racks and sheds be soon put in place now that a lot more people are purchasing bikes for future use and may local bike sharing systems be implemented on a metro-wide scale. Next slide, please. To the youth, social media will continue to form part of our voice. Hashtags like protected bike lanes now, commuters naman, reflect our call for people oriental mobility. Let me also acknowledge other relevant hashtags like mass transport now, balik pasada, and no to jeepney face out in support of mass transportation. Donate to known causes, sign petitions, share posts, join on ground gatherings with caution, donate, okay, donate, and educate and be educated. Join organizations that advocate for these causes, like the organizations present here in this talk show, or even try these modes of transportation for yourself while following health measures and safety, road safety specifically. Next slide, please. So to the bigger groups out there and the government, may proper infrastructure for sustainable modes of transportation be implemented with utmost priority. Through laws like the Bicycle Act of 2010, Pedestrian Protection Act of 2013, and most especially the recent Safe Pathways Act, we can uplift our people's mobility. Next slide, please. Borrowing UP Bike Shares tagline, together, let us get people to places. Thank you. Thank you very much, Erica. I love the tagline, let us get people to places and I love this aspect of urban mobility where not only not only is it very good for our environment but it's actually very good for us especially as individuals it's very good for our physical wellness and as we know as we are healthy physically we get healthier emotionally and mentally as well so thank you for sharing that thank you for that wonderful talk and presentation Erica and now everyone let us welcome our next youth speaker our next youth speaker right now is Jolina Loneza. Uh, hello. Um, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jolina Loneza, and I'm a Greenpeace volunteer. Apart from that, I am also promoting permaculture. Some of the principles that I like from it is creatively use and respond to change and observe and interact. These principles are applicable if we want to reinvent a better normal. Since cities are the primary source of growth and innovation, we have to change the unsustainable models of our cities. Together with the advent of climate change, we need to rethink the way of planning and growth that would respond to the task of improving their overall green performance and eco-efficiency. So here, um, cities have the capability of providing for everybody only because and only when they are created by everybody. This is a famous quote from Jane Jacobs. Uh, this is my basis for reimagining my city, a green and sustainable city that provides the necessities of the public. Cities should be reinvented for the people. It should be planned considering the needs and the lifestyles of the ones who are actually utilizing it. Next slide, please. Um, as you can see here, we currently only have 0.03% of public spaces in Metro Manila, which is really bad compared to the other cities such as Singapore and Hong Kong. Next slide. Next slide. So here is my drawing of my reimagined city. Not exactly that, because technically it would take months for planners to study an ideal city, but it is a representation of my imagined one. It has the aspects that were even discussed and will be discussed on this talk. As you can see, architecture plays a vital role on this reimagined city. Uh, next. My reimagined green city extensively promotes green solutions. Some of the key features are the framework that integrates a green city or green transport, greening urban 
agriculture, water security, green technologies, green buildings, green public services, stormwater systems, but I want to focus on green spaces. Next. Um, Filipinos love malls for meetups and gatherings, and one of the factors why we do is uh, because it's one of the only options where we could go. There aren't much parks or public spaces where we can go hang out. Next slide. Um, so what are the benefits of green spaces? This includes a reduction of urban heat island effect and city smog, delay rainwater discharge, uh, it lessens carbon emission, it mitigates noise in urban areas, controls erosion, improves well-being and health of citizens, attract tourists, and increase the city's attractiveness. And next slide. And it also helps conserve historic environments such as the Aroceros Forest Park, which is Manila's last long. Next slide. Um, so here are some of the solutions or how we could uh, apply these components of the street imagine city. Uh, first one is bring nature to the city. So one of the question here is how can we bring nature to the city if the lots have been occupied by buildings already? We can't just demolish buildings, right? This is where the use what is already there enters. Green spaces can also be something where you put that greenery inside or on your buildings, such as green roofs, or simply just upgrading the public spaces we have like on sidewalk. One key element of green architecture or design is you have to replace what you occupy. For example, if you built a commercial building on a 2,000 square meter lot, you should provide a huge percentage equivalent to that occupied area for a green space on your building. The build, build, build projects of the government would be so much better if they would strictly stick to that component of green, green, green or sustainable and livable design. Since professionals and experts are really considering and studying different factors, escaping those standard and outdated designs that we've been having for years or decades. Uh, also, this sustainable plan doesn't only mean putting nature as a component or design but it also considers the process, the materials, and how we could adopt and maximize the, the use of nature as a part of the element of the design of, or the plan. It's a really great solution if they could incorporate this program uh, for urban agriculture and incorporating more regulations are something that should be done by the community and the LUUs for the cities or municipalities to be more self-sufficient though this was already uh, discussed on the first stop and it's really enlightening to know that there are efforts that are already that are already being executed um use small and slow solutions so cities could apply self-regulation and also accept feedback the city government should promote these efficiencies and activities green solutions for the local development um lastly as a youth and a Filipino, we should all speak up, show that we actu actually want and demand a better normal, not just a new normal, not only for our generation, but also for the, gener the other generations to come. So that's all, and thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much, Jolina. I love what you said there, where green, 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 and instead of having to go na to nature, why not bring nature to us, yeah? I mean, if we really look at it, why do we have to go and see nature? We usually go there because we're stressed out. We're stressed out from the city. So instead of having to go out, why not bring nature to us here in the city? Why not go green, 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 add more greenery to the city, add more green spaces? And in that sense, it will decrease also our stress as, you know, our, our stress as a community. So I love that. So thank you so much for that, uh, for that presentation, Jelena. And the gentle reminder as well, I forgot to mention this, our youth lead, for our youth leaders, a gentle reminder that we have five minutes to share our presentations, to share our talks with everyone. So our last youth leader is Karen Shai. Take it away, Karen. Okay, can you guys hear me? We can hear you. Okay, perfect. So hi, good afternoon everyone. I'm Karen Chai 
and I'm here to discuss the youth's role in sustainable city planning. Um, so, do we have my slide up there? Okay, cool. Um, I think this is the third slide. Can we go to the first one, please? Oh, okay, well, um, I'll just go ahead and say it anyway. Okay, so um, a survey done by World Benchmarking Alliance or, org showed that people from ages 15 to 24 generally prioritize the need for a sustainable environment over sustainable society and economy. I think it was around 54% uh, of the total. And this age group tends to be very vocal, particularly on social media, about the need for transportation alternatives, like Erika was talking about, and the public areas, as Jelena mentioned, and also on the topic on the use of single-use plastics, recycling, and the use of reusable items. As you know, as you've seen on social media, it's uh, really been blowing up lately. So this means that the world is now more environmentally conscious than ever. I feel that the youth should take part in city planning for this reason, and also because they make up nearly half of the population in the Philippines. So such a large demographic, I feel should be given a platform for inclusion, or if, or rather a larger platform for inclusion, especially since uh, the youth make up some of the larger percentages of commuters and users of public property, etc. And also because, uh, as you've mentioned earlier, that we are the future, we are the present and the future of the nation. Now, uh, some cities that successfully include youth in planning are specifically Saida and Lebanon, and multiple cities across the state of California in the US, as well as Germany. Uh, these are just some of the few that I can come up with off the top of my head, but they do have very successful projects that include youth in their city planning. So um, I guess to start that off, uh, the youth should be encouraged and given opportunities at their schools to be able to see how city planning works and to also be included in the conversation and then be allowed to, co to collaborate and be, be guided by professionals later on. Uh, we would be offering ideas and solution, of course, not only for ourselves, because we kind of, uh, we have this idea of what kind of cities we want to live in, what kind of uh, environment we want to grow up in, and also for the future generations. So, you know, once we're given a voice, I, uh, once the youth are given a voice in city planning, uh, I feel like a lot of the focus is going to be on sustainability and environment. So um, that's all I have. Actually, I think there was a bit of a problem with the slides, but yeah, I hope I made myself, uh, you know, explain myself clearly. Okay, yeah, thank you very much, Karen. Yeah, that was that was crystal clear. Thank you. So there you have it, everyone. Yes, I do agree that it would be nice, especially to give the youth um, a voice when it comes to sustainability and um, and and providing solutions and providing ideas for a greener future for all of us. So thank you very much for sharing for sharing, Karen. Okay. So I believe uh, we, might be expect we might be experiencing a few technical difficulties on Facebook, which we are fixing right now. However, why don't we move forward? Why don't we move forward as we say thank you, of course, to, to all of our youth for sharing. We would like to ask for, okay, hold on, just double checking if we're on track. Yes, we are, yes, we are. Okay, now we would like to hear from our experts naman, sa ating mga experts. Please tell us more about these issues at ano ba ang inyong mga solution or good practices na nangyayari na at posibleng mangyayari. How can we also take action moving forward as we move to the better normal? Okay, so we'd love to hear from our experts in a few moments. Please do make yourselves ready. You will have seven minutes. You will have seven minutes to, to share. As of now, why don't we look into our Zoom chat while we're still fixing up what's happened. We're still fixing our technical difficulties 
from Facebook. So thank you everyone for sharing. And do feel free to type in if you have any comments, if you have any comments on what our youth shared and what our youth speakers shared earlier, do feel free to chime in, do feel free to comment, to react, to support, whatever it is that you want to say. We're always happy to hear from all of you. Okay. Okay. So why don't we take this moment why don't we take this moment to hear naman from our experts? Yes, we'd love to hear solutions. We'd love to hear good potential good practices from all of you. So why don't we hear first from Life Cycles PH? Can we hear from Keisha Mayuga? Hi. Hi, everyone. Wow, it's great to um, hear from our youth. Um, I would like to consider myself as a youth. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, I think, you know, it's great that uh, we have, um, you know, not just youth, but also women, a lot of women on um, who are invited here, because um, this is precisely the kind of uh, community we want to build for a better normal. And you, you're all right, actually. Um, this is really the opportunity to change up um, what, what we were all used to um, before COVID. And this is the time to really um, think about um, more sustainable solutions uh, moving forward. And um, because I know it's a pandemic and it's unfortunate, but it's actually really the best time to change old ways. So, you know, even the, even the little things that you can do at home, like your own urban gardening, or if you chose to bike today instead of like taking a car that's already a lot and you know it's gonna be if you make it part of your new normal then maybe your friends and other people around you not just um, people our age but um, older people and everyone will be influenced because of what you're doing so um, thank you for everyone here to, uh, by um, being part of the better normal and yeah I just hope that we do build something oh there Oh, I have slides. Yes. So um, as part of the new normal, actually, um, I advocate a lot for cycling and not just as uh, something that's uh, for sport, but something that is really essential, especially now moving forward um, during COVID and po even post COVID. So let's go next slide. So I'm going to talk about um, what our situation is now. Um, a lot of our workers uh, have been walking for hours and it's already been what, three months. And a lot of them are still walking uh, for hours. And I know this because many people message our page um, almost every day saying their story, um, telling me that they walk for 10 kilometers just to get to work and just to um, make a living for that day. So next slide. Um, but, you know, if we look at other cities that are outside of um, the Philippines, we can see that they're really adopting into something, um, into new infrastructure for um, an old form of transport, which is the bicycle. So I think Erica talked about it already earlier, but um, yeah, it's not just something that's cool. It's actually becoming something that's essential because the bike is one of the best ways to get around without spreading the virus and also the cheapest and also the healthiest. So next slide. Oh, oh, it's blurry. Anyway, so um, an estimate, we estimated uh, from um, various groups that just within the GCQ, uh, ECQ period to MECQ period, there were 5,000 new cyclists and um, electric scooter uh, users um, just within two months and it probably boomed uh, when GCQ happened because then all the bike shops um, opened up so we are talking about thousands of new cyclists and scooter users out there but next slide please but how um, can we protect them so and we're always assuming that uh, once public transport becomes normal, people will go back to that. But in reality, we did a survey and a lot of the cyclists, the new cyclists now, 
um, said that even if it returns or even if there are shuttles, they're still going to continue biking. So next slide. But how could we improve this experience for everyone who just started and who are also thinking about biking? So um, what we want to push forward is actually putting up bike lanes, protected bike lanes, not just in LGUs, but also in national roads. Um, because imagine thousands of people um, are biking now and there is just no other form of protection for them because it was never allocated. So um, next slide, please. These are just some of the stories of them asking that, you know, the government should really do something about putting up bike lanes because they have no protection against a car that's moving 30 kilometers per hour or a motorcycle that didn't see them. And it's really high time um, for everyone to recognize, not just the government, but also motorists to recognize that there are cyclists on the road and that we should respect, um, we, we should respect them. So next slide, please. Um, and I know for a fact that there are a lot of cyclists because in life cycles, um, we have given more than a thousand frontliners within just the past three months. Um, we've given them new bicycles to get to work. In, in fact, I saw some of them earlier when I was um, biking out um, nearby and it's really becoming part of their new normal. And it's not just because they, um, you know, if they had a choice between public transport or biking, they would still choose biking. Um, and it's part of the better normal that we really want to get into. So next slide, please. Okay, so um, these are actually updated because we just delivered a few bikes just yesterday. So it's more than a thousand by now and we already raised 3.1 million um, just to give bikes to the frontliners. So it's not just bikes, it's also helmets, it's also locks, it's also lights. Um, just to make sure that they're safe because again, we don't have proper infrastructure to protect um, our cyclists. So next. Next slide, please. So what we are proposing, me and a team of experts are actually proposing, is that we create hospital loops in different cities um, in Metro Manila. So these are just some examples. Here's one in Quezon City connecting uh, four hospitals, another one in Manila connecting three hospitals, and the one in San Juan, which they just put up last week for World Bicycle Day, um, connecting two hospitals and expanding to more. So next slide, please. So I just want to close with this because I know there's a lot of us, but um, we really need to recognize that cycling is not just an alternative mode of transport, but a main mode of transport, not just for our nurses, not just for our doctors, but a lot of employees out there, a lot of people who need to do their daily things. And what can we do to the what can we do for the people who have been saving our lives for the past three months? So just want to close with this. The least we can do for the people saving our lives is to save theirs. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Chisha, for that very enlightening talk. And actually, as you were talking, as I was seeing your slides and the statistics, I started thinking, where can I get a bike? <laughs> I, I haven't really been going out during these times, but, but I, you know, I, because I, honestly, I'm not that uh, educated yet as, as to the, as, as to the complete benefits and the bigger picture as, as to the, the, the benefits of, of urban mobility through biking. And thank you for sharing that. And, and I love it that we're all here to learn together. And so once again, everyone, uh, if, if whether you're in Zoom or we hope that we've fixed our Facebook technical concern, we'd love to hear from all of you. This is a wonderful, wonderful learning period for all of us. This is a wonderful time of change. And this is a time, this is a time where all of us, where even you, where one voice matters. So we would love to hear from all of you. Comment down in, your, in, the, in the comment section below what it is that you would like to see, any comments or suggestions. And, and please type in in the Q&A slot as well if you have any questions that we may address later on. Okay. 
All right, so thank you very much. A gentle reminder to our experts as well that we have seven minutes. We have seven minutes to share our piece, okay? And after that, we'll proceed to the next speaker. So seven minutes, we will move over to our next expert, Ika Fernandez of Urbanismo. You are up. Okay. All right. There we go. Uh, magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Uh, Ika Fernandez po. So, um, really lovely presentations from Erica, Jolina, Karen, and Keisha. Um, so, while Keisha, Erica, and Jolina spoke a bit about the, the more physical design and tactical mobility uh, initiatives are involved in, and they're brilliant, no? I wanted to shift a bit and then speak about the uh, invisible aspect of uh, many of the things we're talking about this afternoon. Um, and since we're talking about utak verde, no, ano yung underlying um, assumptions that uh, we have as we navigate this new normal? So I think if there's one thing I want to highlight for the next five minutes, it's that sustainable urban design, uh, particularly in the context of COVID-19, is a question of survival for many of us. And it's not just something that's cute or interesting or, um, or pretty to look at, but it's a question of survival. Uh, for many families uh, in neighborhoods in the Philippines right now who are going through a lot. So I'll, um, the next couple of slides will be speaking about um, perhaps things to consider, uh, many of which the others, like life cycles, are already uh, doing in their own way, but it's not so obvious, no? The more invisible aspect of uh, public, uh, public uh, space design and transport policy. Uh, next slide, please. And I'll be speaking uh, from the context of urbanismo, which is a very informal uh, collective of urban planners and practitioners across the different disciplines. No? Um, and just to highlight that the issues that we're facing now in terms of COVID-19, whether it's uh, transport policy or access to food or uh, even uh, vulnerabilities like disasters or um, conflict, they existed before, uh, before COVID, but are more uh, heightened now because of the pandemic. Next slide, please. And we're seeing now um, that, that the usual ways of working uh, is not enough. That even as we try to advocate for better design, better plans, we have to think about uh, the kinds of uh, policies and agreements that underpin these designs. Um, and for, of course, how do we finance it? No? Because again, if there is a transport policy, uh, para kanino ba ang kalsada? Para kanino ba ang public space? No? Uh, and who's being excluded from these kinds of conversations? Next slide, please. And as we think about uh, designing our cities, no, we have to think about our relationship to, to the place, not only um, how it looks like or how we navigate through it, but what are our values, our customs, and history, and how we identify with our places. Next slide, please. So these are things that uh, we're now facing squarely with COVID. No? Now we have uh, a multitude of issues ranging from our, uh, our old um, transport um, jeepneys now being phased out. We have uh, communities being ripped apart because of COVID, people being locked out of their homes. We have OFWs now uh, trying to get home because of Bulik Provincia. Um, and these things are, uh, are usually discussed in separate silos in terms of policy, but the call of COVID now is to think about it in a, in a more holistic manner. Um, because we have to think about the social aspect. No? Everybody's experiences of, of uh, the city are different. And when we design, we have to think of, uh, keep in mind the most vulnerable, uh, those who are uh, without a space for a garden, uh, those who are dependent on walking or uh, cycling or mass transport, uh, who's, those who are differently able. No? Next slide, please. So a lot of what uh, I'd like to share are, is out there. Um, and uh, as Urbanismo, we released a number of materials with PCIJ. Uh, next slide, please. Um, uh, NGMA, and uh, I encourage you to take a look at those materials. No? Um, next slide, please. Where our cities are the epicenters of, of many of the things that, as Filipinos, we uh, have been ignoring for years, but now we have to look, uh, address square in the face. Next slide, please. So these are maps that you can take a look at uh, in terms of uh, the evidence out there. And I encourage others who are not familiar to take a look at the wealth of material, not only from us, but from other people uh, who have been researching this uh, for the last few years. Next slide, please. And I hope uh, if there's anything that I'd like to um, 
um, ask of the people in, in this chat and those listening on Facebook is to think about your neighbors, no? Uh, because as this map shows, uh, although we have very rich uh, communities, say in uh, Manila and Pasig or QC or Manila, uh, uh, right beside these areas of, uh, of, of wealth, you have pockets of poverty. Um, please ask yourself, are my neighbors doing okay? Are my, uh, is my, open, my space um, uh, actually serving uh, even the least of, of my neighbors? Or is it something that they don't think about? Next slide, please. And it's something we'll be feeling more and more. No? So going back to what I was saying about, uh, about the kind of urgency, it's not just about uh, taking care of your neighbor. No? It's, it, has, it has major impacts on our economy. So I think uh, going back to all of this, uh, next slide please, uh, we have to remember that urban reform is not something nice to have, uh, but it's something that we need to do for our survival as Filipinos, uh, as we take care of our neighbors and our neighborhoods. No? Um, and as um, we're now entering into the um, rainy season, where many of our communities are now going to be dealing with floods as well. Uh, so next slide please, and last week we had an earthquake. So uh, it's not, these are not easy things to think about. Um, and I do commend Greenpeace for convening this conversation. No? But again, we can't, although for, for communications purposes, it's easier to be uh, a one uh, topic uh, person drilling down on a particular issue on built environment. As we design, as we prototype, as we build together, hopefully these are things that could be considered uh, in the design about our neighbors and our neighborhood. Ayan po, maraming salamat. Thank you very much for, for your lovely sharing, Ika. I think, I think it was a, I, I loved what you shared particularly where, where for us to think about how are my neighbors doing? You know, because I, I believe that the first month of COVID, everyone was, you know, we were very concerned about everything happening around. But as, as we slowly, as we slowly progress into this norm, you know, sometimes we tend to forget about what's happening out there for some of us. So I believe that was a nice reminder to all of us and how all of these changes are not only affecting us that are watching, but of course our neighbors around us as well. So thank you very much for reminding us and for bringing these difficult, these difficult topics and conversations to life. Thank you very much, Nika. Okay, so next up, again, we have seven minutes for our expert. Next up is from Emerging Architects. We would like to hear from Don. Don, you are next. Okay, Don. Okay. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you loud and clear, Don. Hey, yes. Good afternoon. Um, first, on behalf of um, Emerging Architect Studio, we'd like to thank Greenpeace for inviting our group to participate in this talk. Um, so we were told that we need to react to Janina's presentation. Um, great job, by the way, for uh, presenting your ideas clearly and concisely. Um, so, um, first, we think there is an opportunity for us as a society to revisit our values and the way we design, especially now during this pandemic. I like actually what Lisa pointed out earlier in her discussion that this pandemic really highlighted a lot of issues in our safety and that the per personal safety, our personal safety, depends on the safety of other people. So, um, which brings us to Jolene's first point, which is bringing nature to the city or revisiting our values. Next slide. So, oh, next slide. Hello. Can you hear me? I'm sorry, I'm uh, experiencing technical difficulties in my Wi-Fi. So I'll just continue. Um, so our team recently made a series of posts that suggest ways to revisit the way we design our rooms, our homes, social housing, and our communities. Um, because we believe that everyone has a role to play in city building. And we feel that it should start at the smallest unit. So for example, you start designing um, home gardens in your in your bedroom in your house in housing design in whole communities. Next slide, please. Next slide. So we feel that it will be easier for everyone to see the importance and benefits of green space if we experience it firsthand, even in the smallest units of our city. So which leads us to our next point. Um, next slide, please. Which is using what is already there or embracing the limitations. <clears throat> In city planning, we have to be realistic. Um, Madalas, there are limitations on what we can do because of the existing conditions. 
very rare yung opportunity that we can make up make or design a city from scratch because most of the time we have to adjust with what we have um, and that's where we can be resourceful and innovative actually so next slide please for example the recent discussions um, this has been um, brought up earlier the recent discussions on changing the way people travel through EDSA um, next slide um, the DOTR um, currently came up with a pro proposal to transform EDSA by using the current conditions of the, the network, the road network, with minimal investment. Next slide, please. So they're working within the dimensions, as you can see here in their plan. Um, so next slide. Um, other examples of embracing um, the limitations is this one in New York. It's an old train track in their city. Next slide. That has been um, forgotten, abandoned for a lot of years. Next slide. And next slide. And that they con converted into an, an elevated linear park. It's called the High Line um, that um, people now enjoy. And it has it had positive impacts on the um, adjacent community. Next slide. Um, next slide, please. So another example, but this one is more drastic, definitely more drastic. It's, an, um, uh, it's a highway in Seoul, South Korea. They had this major highway which they converted into a public space. It's a very long public space. They revived uh, a dead, uh, technically a dead creek, um, and they converted it into a public space. It's called the Changge Chon theme. You can learn uh, about this on YouTube. There are several videos on the High Line and the Changge Chon theme. Um, it, um, it's now a tourist attraction in the city. It gives green space. It had positive impact on the adjacent neighborhoods, and um, it had environmental impacts by um, decreasing the heat, uh, heat island effect in the area. So um, my, my point here is um, designing cities, as Jolina pointed out, is using what is already there. So next slide, please. We can come up with solutions, next slide, by using um, what we have and improving on it. Next slide, please. So this is the Chonga Chon in South Korea in Seoul. Next slide. Locally, what we can do is um, look at the current conditions. Like for example, this one is a proposal for a street in Baguio by making it more transit oriented, um, making more mixed use development so that people can have a sense of place and community that's better than what's previously uh, on site. Next um, slide, please. Or for example, this one is a um, riverside um, location in Rodriguez Rizal that's currently um, unused that um, people, uh, local um, government units can actually develop to improve the quality of the community in the area. Next slide, please. Next slide, yeah, for example, that um, simple solutions like that one, which brings us to her third point. Um, next slide, please. Um, the build, 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 or the green, 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 or it's a new opportunity. Um, next slide, please. So just a quick share. You can check this out on our Facebook page or on our Instagram. But we discovered, our team discovered, that um, cities actually change and adapt after pandemics in the past. This led to the creation of sewers, safe seats, even the New York Central Park. It was created to um, push um, public health in the forefront to, the, to advance and improve pub public health. Next slide, please. Next slide. Uh, next slide again. Next slide. So cities actually evolved to hopefully be better. Um, actually, here in the Philippines, we have um, Iloilo, which is paving the way for sustainable city design. And even Pasig, um, they have elevated walkways in the CBD that's promoting um, uh, pedestrian movement and community and green space in the city. So um, as a, uh, some, something to improve on is that city planning is a holistic approach. It's a multidisciplinary task and green space is one of the aspects of this process. Uh, but there are a lot more that we need to consider. For example, better cities or cities of the future should be inclusive and aim to address current inequalities that we learned from uh, or what highlighted during this pandemic. Next slide, please. 
we can do this by learning from models actually um learning from best practices all around the world and take um taking them and applying them here in the local context for example australia is um <clears throat> exploring the 20 neighbor neighborhood concept where clusters of neighborhood um people can um have their playgrounds and parks but they also have access to housing local public transport safe cycling networks employment opportunities shopping and schools within the area which is um their plan is to create 20 minute um, cluster neighborhoods to comprise the city <clears throat> or we can use next slide please metrics like this one um this is from project for public spaces they try to um gauge if a place is great by um using this criteria if it provides comfort and image access and linkages sociability um uses and activities <clears throat> so um basically that's it um we we know that we want to come out of this with better communities of the future and actually we can feel everyone's active involvement in by just looking at our social social media feed and it's very um optimistic actually we're very hopeful and thank you for giving us the opportunity to discuss this idea okay thank you very much don for everything that you shared and thank you and I, I think it's amazing how there are so many things that all of us are learning here together today i love the i love what Dawn showed that historically is that it's shown that that a lot of changes tend to happen during pandemics like this and as Dawn also shared earlier that it's during these times talaga when we as individuals dito talaga lumalabas ang ang pagka-innovative natin ang pagiging ang pagiging creative natin because we are we are forced to find solutions to what is happening around us so we encourage everyone to continue to continue to share um, continue to share what your insights are if you have any questions uh, get creative with your questions too that's totally fine at uh, ngayon, tumitingin tayo dito sa Facebook. We are live on Facebook once again. We apologize kanina, kanina We had a few technical difficulties. And once again, maya-maya po, we will be having a special poll. Kasi nga gusto po natin medyo engaging tayo dito. We want to be a bit engaged and interactive with everyone because you are part of this conversation as well. However, because of our technical difficulties of Facebook, medyo maihirapan tayong ma-activate ang ating poll dito. So we want to hear, we want to hear your thoughts, we want to hear what your choices are sa ating exciting poll maya, maya And for that, we invite everyone, I see the link here, the link is right here on Facebook. You can find the link there to our Zoom room where we will be able to engage with you better. So inviting everyone to join our Zoom room as well, so that we can join in sa ating poll maya maya. Okay, so thank you for everyone that's sharing dito sa Facebook then. Okay, so once again, everyone, please join in dito sa ating Zoom room. And right now naman po, we will continue. We will continue with our panel discussion. So we just finished with uh, Don sharing. Ngayon po, we have seven minutes with our expert from Non-Timber Forest Products. Exchange Program Asia, our last final panelist uh, expert Matin for today, Dazzle Labatis. Yes, Dazzle, you're up next. Uh, yes, hello, um, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Shubi. Thank you, uh, Greenpeace, for inviting me this afternoon and provide my insights not only to Karen's presentation but to the presentation of all the youth. Nakaka, actually, nakaka inspire to hear everyone. Um, sharing their vision no, of reimagining the city, uh, living better after COVID-19. So I'm focusing more, so, so some of our, my colleagues discuss on the built environment and how tactical urbanism can be uh, designed. So I'm focused, Karen uh, presented about um, active citizenry, so I will be focusing on that. So. First, uh, let me introduce NTFP and the Non-Timber Forest Products Exchange Program Asia or NTFP Asia is a collaborative network of over 100 non-government organizations and community-based organizations working with forest-based communities to strengthen their capacity in the sustainable management of Indonesia, Malaysia, Vietnam, and Cambodia. So I'm very happy with Karen's presentation. Although it's I sayang na karon ng technical difficulty on the on the slides, no. But I I I have here one slide to identify three good points from her presentation. First, it's very good that she mentioned about opportunity, no. Opportunity was identified because we all know that when provided with knowledge, opportunities and enabling an inclusive environment, that they need to thrive. 
youth can be a positive force for development, particularly in planning, no? Because we're that this is the focus of our uh, topic for this afternoon. Um, Magsegue lang ako on on what important what is the importance of active citizens, no? Active citizens really can contribute to the environmental, social, and institutional resilience of cities. Malaming studies or um uh, na nagbe-mention dito na at nagbe-verify nitong statement na to. It is important that we foster collaboration between citizens and government uh, and it's, it is an important dimension of a smart government. No? Scientific literature even acknowledges that the essential role of citizens in smart cities and argues that the notion of empowerment of citizens and democratization of innovation should be added to this definition. No? Uh, but again, um, like what Karen mentioned, it's also important that she discuss the importance of education. So we start, it's important that we start in our school. Uh, actually, it's also important that active citizenry starts with our family. And okay then na, na, na identify niya na yung term na encourage. No? So when we encourage the youth, we must, en we must ensure that we really meant it. No? not just uh, for tokenism, and we have to set a good example. We have to share the responsibility with them. We have to provide them the right tools. We have to be transparent and accountable as well. So I think um, wala naman masyadong points of for improvement, just two uh, from my end. Um, we want to transform that opportunity that Karen mentioned into a reality. No, We have to provide youth with leadership roles, um, innovative and adaptable platforms that, uh, that they can discourse, that they can discuss, and where they have the power to engage and negotiate with government and decision makers. Hindi lang puro yung mga leaders lang natin, uh, top, top level decision makers ang pinakikinggan, but we also have to consider the power of youth and the knowledge and experience of youth in decision making and planning process. And Another important thing is to prioritize capacity building, especially um, capacitating our youth to lobby and demand for the, uh, in different sectors, including the national and local government, to invest on them and enable them to have full and effective participation and representation in all levels of planning and decision-making processes from um, design, implementation, monitoring, up to evaluation. Um, involvement of youth in local planning allows for better understanding of their local government and community and address community issues, including development of their habits and participation uh, as a good citizen. We must um, provide the younger generation with readily available tools and enable them uh, to fully participate in, the, in different decision-making arenas to better shape a brighter future for all. Ang madalas na narinig natin yung kabataan, yung pag-asa ng bayan, and yung kabataan, yung pag-asa ng ating kinabukasan. But actually, nakita natin ngayon sa COVID-19 how the youth is actually um, working and engaging now. No? So the youth is not just our future, but the youth is also our present. And it is important to hear their voice. It is important to include, to include them in our planning processes. And we have already um, some uh, initiatives in the Philippines, like for example, um, let me identify some notable, like there's already a Philippine Youth Development Plan of 2017 to 2022, uh, which serves as a framework for unifying action among the youth and youth serving groups, no? So we can up to that. Um, and also there's some um, Republic Act 107 for Sangguniang Kabataang Reform Act of 2015, which um, provides for the local youth development plan, comprehensive barangay youth development plan and annual investment program. So these are some of the things that we can follow through in, with our government and national government to, to provide youth a genuine space to fully participate in local planning. Um, yun lang. Thank you. 
Thank you very much for that, Dazel. Yes, I love, I love what you're sharing about our youth and yes, that our youth being our present. We can see right now that our youth actually is, they're more active, they're more active than ever. And especially during these times, they're more active in helping and, and creating change para po sa ating lahat. So thank you for sharing that, giving our youth more avenues to speak and as, as well as setting good examples, hindi po ba? When we say active, active citizenry, what really rings in my mind is that word active. Right? It's that word of active in the sense of taking action and taking, taking action with integrity, not only for the people around us, but for, the, for ourselves most especially. And so with that being said, ngayon, um, thank you to all of our panelists that shared. Marami marami salamat po sa inyo. Very, very insightful. Thank you very much. Ngayon naman po, tingnan naman, tingnan naman po natin ang pulso at damdamin ng ating mga participants, to everyone that joined. Once again, uh, if you're in Facebook, we hope you are joining us right now in Zoom. We apologize for the technical difficulties. Uh, we can, as, as we're seeing po, no, uh, this norm na in experience po natin, there are some challenges as well. And one of those challenges are technical difficulties that we must get used to. We must get used to as we slowly embark towards this digital world that we are navigating to bring all of us together, even no matter how far apart we are. So. We hope you're in Zoom. So that's among us on Facebook. Again, please click, click on the Zoom link because we would love to hear from you because we will be having a special Zoom poll. And we can say that is a, a bit of active citizenry, at least focusing on that word active, where we can take action in the sense of what do we agree with? What do we agree with in terms of some questions po natin dito sa ating poll? Ngayon, if you're on Facebook, for now, you can simply comment the number that corresponds to your answer. Okay, so number one is yes, number two is no, and number three is I will consider. Okay, so again, para sa mga nasa Facebook po, just put in the number that corresponds with your answer. One, yes, two, no, three, I will consider. Okay, ngayon po, based on what we are hearing from all of our guests, we want to hear what our audience is sharing and we want to hear your thoughts and we want to hear how you can commit to a bit of action. Again po, we're not look, we, we don't have to necessarily take 100% action, even just 1% action incrementally over how many days is already a big change po para sa atin, whatever we are ready for. So why don't we take a look po, ito po ang ating mga questions, ang mga choices para po sa inyo. Okay, now our very first one is A, or number the first one is I will walk, bike, and take public transportation while moving around my city. So again, we heard so many wonderful insights. Pati ako napaisip ako because I've been driving a car around and pati ako napaisip, where can I get a bike around here? Where can I get a bike? It, it, it's just much more mobile around the area. And at the same time, it's just so much better for health as well and for the environment. So is the answer yes? Is it no? Is it I will consider? Once again, kung nasa Facebook po tayo, you can just type in number one for yes, number two for no, and number three for I will consider. I've been told that there is a Facebook poll na pala. <laughs> Okay, we're happy that the technical difficulties have been fixed and solved para po sa ating lahat. It is appearing. So everyone, please look in and type in your answers or click the box, I believe. Click in the box uh, that corresponds with yes, no, or I will consider for biking and public transport, for biking as public transport, <laughs> biking and public transportation while moving around the city. Okay, so that is for the first one. And we're going to gather up all of our collective answers po maya maya and we will take note and we will announce kung gano ka uh, we will announce our uh, yung, yung mga sagot. Okay? So next is, number two is to sign the national petition to reclaim city spaces for people such as green spaces and urban forests. Okay? So what is your answer there? Is it yes? Is it no? Or I will consider. I believe this is the easiest option that we can have and there might be a link over there that we can click for the national petition to reclaim city spaces for people such as green spaces and urban forests. Okay, so click in that box, click in your answer right over there. And for our third question is, I will practice community care through actively engaging in city planning and decision making. 
is that something that you feel you are ready to do. So taking a bit more of an active role in our community, in our, in, in our area, in our barangay, wherever we are, uh, taking a more proactive role in decision-making and planning. So what is our answer there? Is it yes, is it no, or is it I will consider? Okay. So we're going to be announcing ang inyong sagot sa ating mga polls quite shortly. I will give it to you as soon as it is ready. Again, so these are these are nice small steps that we can take. Maybe for some of us, we, we might be ready for bigger steps. So just type in your answers. Type it in, or since the poll is already active to Facebook, we can just we can just click it in, and we have it. Okay, we have this is very exciting. Okay. Ito pong ating poll results. Number one, with regards to biking and taking public transportation, 82% of you said yes, and 18% of you said, I will consider. So thank you very much for sa ating super duper engaged audience and very interactive. Okay, ngayon, ang ating next is to sign the national petition to reclaim city spaces. 100% of you said yes. That is amazing. Okay, so. We are, we are grateful for your participation. And itong huli po natin is, I will practice community care through actively engaging in city planning and decision making. 94% of you said yes, and 6% six, uh, 6 of you said, I will consider. So I think, it's, I think this is a very good, very good progression that we have with our discussions and talks here today. So thank you, everyone. Maraming salamat sa ating active and highly engaged na audience. And so, ngayon naman po, we would love to finally hear the thoughts of our reactors from the government. We will have five to six minutes each to share. Uh, let's all see the verdict. Uh, so, our reactors, please tell us what you think of the reimagined cities or any of the policy recommendations. And what do you suggest we do together to push these recommendations forward? Again, we will have five to six minutes each to share. And first, can we hear from SK Federation President of Pasig City, Patricia Torres. Patricia, you are on. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, Patricia, loud and clear. Okay. okay. Um, let me start. Um, like the past, um, on the on the part one of this webinar series, um, I was very firm in saying that this is very very possible. No, um, having urban spaces and um, having active citizenry. No, but it all takes a p political will. No, from the leaders, uh, from the leaders from the national level, from the local level, to actually make these things possible. Now, let me comment on. Um, each of the speakers or the major topics they have discussed, no. Uh, first, the um, um, I would like first to talk to share how Pasig has been called um, a green city and that we have been innovative in terms of green solutions such as elevated um, walkways, um, having bike lanes on our major um, roads, um, single-use plastics on our markets. All this have been um, existing even on the past administrations. But of course, there are more um, ways to actually innovate innovate more. So um, on, uh, on the bike lanes, currently, um, I feel like since we've already started this initiative having um, bike lanes, I think it should be expanded also on not just on main roads, but also on 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 streets on uh, narrow streets within the city i think especially that since um most commuters live in the barangay areas when streets are narrow these streets should also have um bike lanes no i think um we've been very supportive on this besides the bike lanes in the roads we also we also need to um help the bikers to have to, pro to ensure their safety, like provide bike vests or um, have anything that could identify them. Because of course, when we are in the streets, um, major vehicles or cars doesn't 
especially in in wide roads don't necessarily see our bikers so we need extra identification on them so that they'll be seen in our roads especially at night of course um some bikers um go home at night and when some streets especially on narrow streets doesn't have um good lighting unlike the the ones in the main roads um it compromises the safety of our bikers so um these are the current policies we we are um proposing for the bike lanes uh, for bikers so also in terms of um decision making in in our in terms of um planning and urban planning uh the the youth has been very vocal about this in passing especially we have representation on sk but um actually from the past administration we didn't have much voice no and there's a specific um department in charge on this but on the on the recent administration we've been the youth has been pushing for a more innovative solutions in the lgu we've been engaged no although um medyo na, na stop because of the covid crisis we hope that in the in the next months we'll be able to complete no yung mga solutions ng current administrations for um more urban planning in passing but um rest assured that um in in this um aspect of of decision making it should not just be those in position unlike for example me as as the as one of the sangguniang kabataan i have a voice in the lgu but this is not enough no my my knowledge is not um sufficient to to represent everyone in in the lgu we need more youth engaged in this from not just in the lgu level but also in in the lower level in the barangay level no um we have sks in there the barangay should also be very very open in terms of of accepting suggestions on urban planning because um even if we make the main roads under the city's jurisdiction very safe or innovative or progressive with bike lanes and with with everything we wanted if the barangays if the barangays jurisdictions is not as um innovative or progressive in terms of having a green and sustainable um roads or places you know it it would not be sustainable in the long run so we need to be engaged first in the community level to be able to um have a holistic process also our constituents naman are mostly in the barangay level no we need we need more voices from the workers we need more voices from our pwds our single moms um we, we need all these stakeholders involved in the process no our leaders should be very very welcoming in for for their um for their voices no i would like also to comment i i like i like how the second speaker talked about on how um we filipinos we uh, really like the malls no we we like it's it's only in the philippines that we have so much malls more than green spaces in that because everything is in there but i feel like i'd like to comment that we like the malls not because we inherently you know um love it to have everything in one but because we are forced to you know we are forced to like because that's that's what that is what is available so i think we need to decongest especially um in in local areas um to have um different places for for different things no like and have more public and safe spaces in pasig um we had uh, several parks no of course this is still a very very uh, uh little percentage of what we could have maximized more um we need to propose to maximize more our spaces and to look into more um dead dead places or roads that could be reconstructed to be safe spaces and public spaces where people could meet where people people could just go around and not just and not just have the need to spend because when you're in a mall you you, you need to um absolutely spend right so i think in making um all this possible in having a sustainable um urban city we need to have more um 
people talking no from all stakeholders and not just from in the LGU level but also on the ground we need to engage more people so that um all these policies will be um will be crafted no as policy in the LGU level and that the, the national level will also be inspired through its different policies so um all in all um i feel like um, all these suggestions and all our dreams, our imagined city, like what Singapore is having right now, is would not be maybe possible in a three in three years in just one term of me sitting or whoever is sitting in the present administration. But we need long term solution. It will not be possible just now. It needs political will and it needs to have sustainable solutions right now so that. Being one, like the sustainable cities would be possible in the long in the long run. So that's all. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Patricia. Thank you for sharing. Okay, let's move over to our next reactor. Okay, ano kaya ang reaction ni SK representative of Davao City, Kent Jones Ramos Ancajas. Okay, you are up next. A gentle reminder as well to all of our reactors that we have five to six minutes each to share our piece. Okay, Kent? Kent, you are on mute. Please unmute your, your Zoom. Ayan, okay. Okay na. Okay na po ba yung audio ko? Yes, okay na Kent, we can hear you. Okay. So, good afternoon po sa lahat ng mga audiences at sa lahat po ng mga reactors dito sa Greenpeace. Um, let me take my comments and reactions about sa lahat po ng mga, about this decision making, about all of the mga imagined city na binugusto nating lahat. And uh, as a representative of Davao City for the SK Federation Davao, um, let me take my comment about this decision making. So, Lahat po ng mga laws, lahat po ng mga imagine, lahat po ng mga gugustuhin ng isang LGU will be implemented if it will be started from the lower level or the barangay level. So me as an SKHR person, siguro mag-start muna sa bata, but dapat uh, we, uh, we the SK leaders will impart knowledge about the clean and green environment, about all the environment environmental issues and most normally all of the sectors of our barangay should cooperate and be engaged in all projects and activities initiated by the youth leaders of our city so lahat naman po ng mga decision natin is may punto and siguro kailangan lang po natin ng suporta galing sa ating mga higher level or the higher government to make it possible. Kasi naman, all about bicycles and everything to make the people safe. Lahat naman po, siguro pwede. But, it should be taken first from the local government unit and next, lahat dapat sila mabigyan ng, ng attention kasi here in Davao City, for example, in our respective barangay, Hindi naman po lahat ng bata dito o mga kabataan ay mahilig po sa environmental protection like uh, replanting, like coastal clean up drives. Kasi most normally lahat dito mahilig sa um, mobile legends and most of them may mga gadget na. So it's all about how will you motivate or how will you invite them to join the activities of the SK for them able to grow as a person and as an individual in helping the, the environment and protecting our mother. So, on behalf of the SK Federation Davo, that's my take and my reactions to our speakers. Thank you so much. I will take a review of your presentation because it's so fast. Hindi ko masyado nabasa lahat ng mga slides. So, thank you so much and thank you, Greenpeace, for inviting me here as your 
reactors, one of the reactors, and to all the SK Federation officers and SK chairpersons of the Philippines, mabuhay at magandang sila. Uh, hapon okay. po sa inyo. Okay, so thank you very much, Ken. Thank you for sharing. Okay, yeah, so we can see some similarities sa mga sinishare po no, ng, ating mga, ng ating mga reactors is that it would be nice, of course, for the youth to be given a voice, but at the same time, it would also be nice for people on the ground up, for, for, for all of us to, to voice out our opinion so that we can make enough noise, so that, so that this can actually be a discussion, so that this is something that can be pushed for the future. Okay, and at, at the same time, you want to encourage that political will, then hopefully that our leaders can make the right decisions, and hopefully that they have that, that political will to make what is necessary and what is appropriate path para po sa ating lahat. Okay. And so, ngayon naman po, uh, we would love to hear naman. So, thank you very much to our SK representatives. Ngayon naman po, para sa ating mga city representatives, we would like to ask you, is this something your office will support or pass? Will they pass it with revision or will they not support or pass it? So, we would love to hear from you. Let's hear from Attorney Cherry Kanda Melodia, City Director from Department of Interior and Local Government of Makati. Attorney Cherry, you are on. Hi. Good afternoon. Um, I am amazed by everything that I have heard from the, like from uh, Ika Fernandez, Don Joseph Sebastian, uh, si Erica Ching, Jolina Leneza, Karen Shai, and everyone else. Uh, you were great. Um, I agree that oh, tingnan niyo, my notes ako. I agree that the youth should be involved in planning, like get them involved in actual programs of the government. Um, kasi madaling magsalita, madaling napakaganda ng inyong mga proposals, but uh, how do we operationalize this? Like, uh, if you have a specific barangay that you would like to see an actual change, like you could get them to see if we put a, black bi a bike lane in this area, how would it look? How would it affect the whole barangay? That will be great. And then you could partner with your SK in that particular barangay so that you could push it up to the city development council that will really be uh, give change we could really actual change because uh, i saw kanina the presentation about chongyuchan river in seoul south korea that project took like 10 years to be realized it's not just changing the it's it was not just removing all those streets and reviving the uh, stream that uh, river in Seoul, Korea. But it was really changing mindsets also that people should be able to walk from one place to another. Uh, because as I have seen and I have experienced, by the way, I am from Davao, Davao City. So hi Kent, I used to work there in the DILG. <laughs> Say hi to Vicky for me. And now I am in Makati, so I know what an urban place is like, and I know how a rural area would like, uh, how it is to live in the rural areas. So really, all your dreams, all you, how we imagine cities should be, these really are great. But uh, what I'm asking the youth is, those in the cities, would you be willing like, to move to the uh, rural areas, to the provinces, so that we can make new cities there. For example, would you be willing to be part of the government's Balik Provincia? So what I'm just saying is, uh, these dreams that you have, these plans that you are proposing, if we could operationalize this, it would greatly help the government but it would also greatly help the government if we could move people outside of Metro Manila or not just Metro Manila, but outside of the cities so that our youth could be in the provinces, in the rural areas so that we could revive 
or we could remake our rural areas and make them more productive and so that these can help the economy and then we can de decongest the cities because this is not just the problem of the Philippines. This is also the problem all over the world. Like all the youth, all the young, young ones are moving towards the cities. <laughs> and I know that because even in my own family, my children are in cities. One is in LA, another is in Sydney, another, and my youngest is in Makati. And not one would consider living in the provinces. So I love all the presentations. I enjoyed listening to you. But my challenge is how do you operationalize this? How do you not just voice out, but how do you concretize this so that government, so that the people in power would be able to uh, uh, make this into concrete plans so that we'll have a better environment, we have a better normal as uh, Greenpeace would have it. That's it. Okay, thank you very much, Attorney. So what we're seeing here is that uh, we're, we're seeing the connection, yeah, that, uh, that what, what everyone is sharing is really amazing, it's really nice, and we love the vision. However, what, what, what our experts here are saying and is that uh, our reactors are saying is that um, how do we manifest this into reality? How do we make yes. this an actual reality? What is the next step? What is, how do we take action? Para mangyari po talaga ito. And they are asking, are you to take that next step? We have the vision and that's usually the first step. Yes, to have a dream about it. And next is to actually concretize it, to manifest it and make it an actual reality for all of us. So thank you very much, Attorney. Ngayon naman po, uh, why don't we hear ang verdict ni Mr. Brian Helly, the head of the Public Information Office of San Juan City. Sa tingin niyo ba, ano ang magandang way forward in terms of active citizenry? Brian, you are up. Thank you so much to me and thank you so much everyone for inviting us in this very helpful, informative discussion. We heard so many brilliant ideas that we are happy to have in common with our presenters and a lot more new ones that we can hopefully apply here in San Juan City. Definitely, we'll be, uh, we will apply a lot of your ideas here. And as for youth, um, we are very much happy and uh, to have a lot of our leaders, youthful leaders here in San Juan, and we welcome more youth leaders here. So allow me to go through some of the ideas brought up here in our discussion. First, bike lanes. Um, COVID-19 has taught us a, a big lesson on mobility for all, uh, Mobility for all with cheap yet clean alternatives like bicycles and e-scooters. I have one over there. Um, uh, San Juan City has implemented phase one for pop-up bike lanes stretching from N. Domingo to Pinaglabanan, Santolan, Ortigas, Connecticut. Uh, Mayor Francis Zamora led the launch with Fisha of Life Cycles and Exa Evolution. We'll be implementing phase two soon with uh, which will cover more streets in San Juan City. Our phase one actually covered our hospital loop from um, SJMC down to Cardinal Santos. And then our phase two, we will be covering a lot more schools and hospitals and offices in San Juan City. And then um, we, will, uh, we are currently in the process of procuring more materials to improve our existing bike lanes with reflectorized paints and other materials like bollards and cones. And Mayor Francis Amor has also ordered PNP San Juan and our traffic and parking management office to man key areas of the bike lane to make sure rules are being followed because every day is like a struggle for me with my with my uh, with my uh, scooter. It's a struggle um, flying the roads of Metro Manila. It's really scary. So I thank Mayor Zamora for having uh, our PNP and our traffic officers uh, man our, our bike lanes so that our daily commute will be safer. Also, a um, life cycle has already given us a number of bicycles for our medical frontliners. Mayor Zamora has promised to provide 100 more to our City Hall employees to encourage them to use bicycles for cleaner mobility and healthier lifestyle, as what um, uh, Erica has pointed out, and also Keisha. And uh, before COVID-19, we were already planning to implement walking, uh, walking bike, and e-trike tours here in the city. Once tourism is given a go signal, we will push through with the plan by hiring unemployed women in our city to be our tour guides. So um, we provide them uh, 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 a really, really 
good source of income, but we also uh, provide our tourists a cleaner option uh, when we tour around the city. Julina and Don mentioned about sustainable lifestyle and green cities, uh, reimagining green and sustainable city. Um, we are very open to that and we welcome that. In fact, San Juan City has already started doing that. We recently finished the Living Museum of Philippine Native Trees at the Pinaglabanan Shrine together with the UPP Delta Alta Sorority Alumni Association, the Overseas uh, Workers Welfare Administration, and Green Convergence. We planted over 100 native trees in the area where everyone can appreciate nature's endemic gifts to the Philippines. And then before COVID-19, we were also uh, uh, in talks with some organizations and exploring possibilities of aquaponics and other methods for urban gardening. This is hitting two birds with one stone, in fact, several birds in, uh, with one stone, um, because aside from it being an environmental endeavor, it is also for food security um, of our constituents and livelihood for our unemployed and for the women organizations in the city. Um, we, were also, we were also looking into a um, clean source of energy here in San Juan City. Um, before COVID, we were on exploratory talks on possible conversion of our city hall's power source to solar. Um, if you, there are people listening over there, um, we, working for a solar uh, provider, solar company energy provider, um, you are welcome to talk, uh, come here, visit uh, San Juan, we can talk, because um, we would like to install um, solar panels for the city hall and also for our 21 barangays, our covered courts, and all our 12 schools. And we're also looking at installing uh, solar power charging stations for po um, phones, gadgets, e-scooters, e-bikes, e-trikes, in key areas of the city um, based on experience, experiences of disaster areas in the country, we saw a need to have uh, these charging stations. So when electricity is unfortunately cut off, we could still have power sources where people can charge their gadgets like phones to reach loved ones and the authorities. And before COVID, a student from the Ateneo actually approached us for uh, the conversion of our street lamps to solar powered lamps at no cost, at no cost, to the city. Hopefully, when things settle down, we can push through with this. And if you also have ideas for um, a greener San Juan city, let us know. Um, we will be happy to, to entertain you. Um, as for, we, I'd also like to cover water. We are planning to install rainwater catchment facilities in San Juan City LGU offices, starting with our city hall. Um, some of our schools, actually two of our schools, two of our 12 schools already have um, rainwater catchment facilities. But we, we plan to have all 12 schools and including UP San Juan. And uh, we also have the Wata Wata Festival. If you have ideas on how to conserve water, then let us know so we can conserve more water when we do um, Wata Wata Festival. Before COVID, we were also planning to conduct the Offland San Juan River with the DNR and the other Metro Manila cities along San Juan River. We will push through with this program as soon as possible. And as Don, um, if Don can also help us with how we can reimagine our creeks and our San Juan River then maybe, you know, um, let us know. Um, we'll be happy to have all these green spaces and really beautiful green spaces here in San Juan City. Although we are pretty small, we're just 7.77 square kilometers. I'm sure that uh, uh, we'll be able to manage. And um, who else? Well, Aika Fernandez of Ur Urbanismo, as she, she mentioned about mobility and food security and then housing for the poor. We're actually building a twen uh, two 22 story buildings, um, socialized public housing um, for our um, uh, informal settlers here in San Juan. So uh, hopefully we can help our constituents with uh, the public housing that we offer them. And um, food, for food security, we're also working on our urban gardens, uh, not just in our schools and in our offices, but also um, with our um, uh, constituents as well. Um, th that's a lesson that we actually learned. Um, we learned from uh, COVID-19 for food security. You know, although we did provide um, food, family food packs for 10 straight weeks, um, we, we realized that, you know, uh, people should also be given the option of having their own gardens at home. Uh, maybe they can have their aquaponics and um, whatever is possible in urban, in an urban setting. And um, I think Dazzle and Karen also spoke about um, youth leadership. Um, we actually, 
um, some of the new leaders here in San Juan are from the youth sector. So we're very happy to be working with our um, seniors and our ates and kuyas here in San Juan City. And we're actually very active in our land use program, in our SIDRA, in our gender and development programs, environment, tourism, social welfare, and transportation. But of course, we welcome more youth in San Juan City to help us out and taking brilliant, brilliant ways and how we can actually make San Juan City not just a smart city, but a green city as well. So um, we have so many more ideas and programs that we want to implement in San Juan City to make it not just a smart city, but also a green one. If you have ideas and programs that you think would be of great help to our city and would be great for the environment, let us know. We'll be very happy to collaborate for the good of our people and for nature, of course. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Brian. So thank you for sharing the progressive updates of San Juan City. That was very nice to hear. Okay, uh, puto naman po tayo sa level na national government. But before that, we would like to remind everyone, please, we're going to have to extend for just another 10 more minutes. Uh, so reminding everyone, especially sa audience natin, to please stay because we will have one final exciting poll. Alam niyo po, these polls are very, very good for us because they help us enact some kind of change right here, right now. So all it takes is another 10 minutes. So we invite everyone to just stay for an extra 10 minutes as we move over to our next. Uh, so puna naman tayo sa level ng national government. Ano kaya ang pagtingin ni Ms. Cristela Castronuevo, Legislative Officer of Senator Ralph Recto sa mga ito. So Ms. Cas uh, Ms. Cristela, we have five to six minutes. You are on. Hi, Chubi. Hello, everyone. Um, good afternoon, and thank you, Greenpeace, for inviting me again. Um, it was an informative first session last Monday, and uh, as usual, this is a very exciting and informative session for me as a technical staff working on national policies. So let me zero in first um, uh, to a few comments uh, on our presenters, um, specifically the bike lanes of Miss Erica. So. As far as national um, policies are concerned, the discussion with regard to the use of bike lanes has long been there. But the sad reality is that we have minimal progress as far as crafting uh, of a national policy is concerned. But with the pandemic that we had, um, the, the situation was really a push to have a more aggressive debate on the need to institutionalize the use of bikes and having the infrastructure um, corresponding to the use of bicycles. Um, Erica mentioned um, Bicycle Act of 2010. That was long ago. That was in the 15th Congress, and now we're on the 18th Congress. And then we also have this Pedestrian Safety Act in 2013. And right now, as a um, uh, measure born out of the COVID-19 pandemic, is the Safe Pathways Act. So, like I mentioned, um, before the opening up of our economy, bikes were basically used as a form of mobility in buying goods for our household, for our family. But as we slowly opened up our economy, we're in, um, we go back to doing our jobs. Um, bikes has now been equated to jobs. And so at a certain extent, the absence of which for workers and for our fellow Filipinos would mean joblessness. So therefore, it is important that we push for the institu institutionalization of this program these days. No bike, no work, because there are no available public transportation out there. So as far as our office is concerned, and we have been calling um, to institutionalize this um, because we know for a fact that a lot of us can make padyak, but we don't have a safe space where to make that padyak. We're not even assured if we can get to our offices safe and sound while using our bicycles. And then when we get to our office, government, pub, uh, private and public um, offices alike, there are no bike racks nor parking spaces. And so, pagod na tayo po madyak, mag-aalala pa tayo kung ano mangyayari sa bike natin because there are no spaces where we can park it, not even a rack. And the Senate is one um, guilty institution for that. We have few colleagues using bicycles and they've been calling for uh, creation of bike racks. So, um, just an update. Because of what happened and because of um, the realization that really bikes are, are important nowadays. Um, there has been an allocation with the proposed Bayanihan extension, a Bayanihan law extension. There has been an allocation of money or funding amounting to at least 700, uh, 17 billion. Um, this is entirely for the transport sector, but this includes procurement of bikes, 
pedestrian and safe bike lanes, including rocks. Um, so, kumbaga, on the question of Tubi earlier, if we have proposals at our office for these kinds of, of pol or, or this, this kinds of programs or policy recommendations, yes, we have. And if you're gonna ask us personally, my take, if we are supportive of this, yes, we are. If we're gonna pass this or not, I think no one will, will oppose this at this point in time because it has been established that this is necessary, this is doable, this is implementable, and this will benefit a greater number of Filipinos out there. But the question would be, are we gonna pass it like with revisions or not? Probably because no policy is ever perfect and it is a continuous work to polish each policy so that it would cater to the benefit of more Filipinos out there. So in terms of green cities of Ms. Jolina, I think there have been also proposals about this, like green communities, um, sustainable cities and communities, which have been filed at least in the Senate. In fact, our office, my principal also filed for, you know, green government um, buildings using green energies, at least start with the government before expanding it out. Um, now, I would like to zero in because it all boils down to active citizenry and the youth participation. Um, my personal advice would be is to bear in mind that legislation and when you want to push forward your advocacy and when you want to have a national policy for this, um, you have to remember that legislation is, an, is a very long and tedious process. It takes time and more often than not, the ending is really bittersweet. You know, for instance, I have a personal experience working on a measure for seven or eight years only for it to be recalled by the president. Hanggang ngayon, that was my first assignment, crafting a national policy for the coconut farmers out there. But um, until ngayon, wala siya. So I guess when we talk of national policies, we always have to bear in mind to do some reality checks because the idealism, we cannot completely get what we want. We cannot be completely ideal, especially when, when it concerns the rest of all the 109 Filipinos because the national policies is not applicable to a certain group only. It has to be implemented nationwide. So this rea reality check also um, makes us manage our expectations. You know, COVID-19 showed us our capacities in various sectors, health, mobility, food, security, to name a few. And we know for a fact that we have many laws regarding these concerns. But at the end of the day, when the pandemic strikes, um, we still have limited um, capacities to respond to them. So to the youth out there, active citizenry is really important. Um, so you have to take part. And by saying that, that doesn't mean that you only have to do it at the national level. In fact, you have to be grounded. You have to start from the bottom. And I guess the reactors also highlighted that need earlier on. So you have to use that voice to collectively push for your advocacies. So you may want to consider the following. In, in pushing for your advocacies to be, for it to become a national policy, you have to identify which of those can be implemented even without um, a national policy or law. You have to recognize and respect the levels of government and let them know in a way, um, and let them know in a way that you also make them accountable later. So you have to, you have to go to that barangay level, um, municipal level, city level, because letting them know of your advocacy is one way for them, for you to make them singil later on. Because you already proposed to them, their barangay captain and all. So after some time, you, you can do the follow up. And then another tip for the youth would be you find your champions, local and at the national levels. If you want to go to, to, to push for bike lanes, probably there are bikers out there amongst your legislators, amongst your congressmen. And there's a lot of them. So find your champions and your local. And then, like I mentioned earlier, you have to manage expectations and set real targets. And then you have to pilot test, consider pilot testing, and then lobby. Another key, uh, key important um, tip that I, I, a key tip that I would uh, want to throw in to our youths is, to continuously educate your leaders because your leaders may not know everything. And by doing so, it doesn't just mean that you tell them that, hey, this is our advocacy, but you have to supply credible data and information so that they can be grounded and they can be informed. And then capitalize on the situation that we are now. And also, one important thing is to know the process, policy making, 
how does it work? What are the stages? And among these stages, where can you, you know, where can you start? Where can you chime in? Where can you, where can you put something on the table? Master the art and science of the process. And then demand a seat in the discussion. Marami tayong nakikita na maingay, ganyan, pero they don't want to, you know, demand a seat in the discussion. But you can do that. And then maningil ka. If you know the, the process, you know where, when is the appropriate time when you can make singil. Like the budget process, for instance, it is where you can make singil what did you do on what particular program. And then consider, this is very important, and nakikita namin ito na lagi itong kulang sa mga implementation ng programs um, almost everywhere. Technology and knowledge transfer. Share the knowledge with others to add more voices for the cause. And then, before I wrap up, do not get tired. You may not get your national policy on bike lanes, on greener cities, on sustainable communities in this Congress, but who knows, you can get that during the next one. Then continuously do na mangulit at magingay. God knows how our leaders monitor traction or development on social issues. So testing the waters yan. And then also know the extent at which you can compromise. Because as, as I mentioned earlier, you cannot get everything in one shot. So provide alternatives. And that's it. Um, we all, in our office, we have uh, numerous um, recommendations in terms of policy and with your support and with your, you know, technical support and advocacy group, um, we welcome you to, to work hand-in-hand hand with us so that we can craft policies that would really lead us to a better normal society post-COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you very much and good afternoon. Thank you very much, Ms. Cristela. So that was very enlightening. And thank you for that reality check for everyone. Right now, what we heard earlier really was all the dreams and visions that, that the youth have. But also that reality check is very, very helpful, reminding everyone that this is a process. It will not happen overnight. It might not even happen in a year. This is a long, tedious process. And we have to check the reality that we do have to understand how the process works. Thank you for all of those tips to help speeding up the process of everyone that wants to get involved. And thank you for reminding everyone as well that we have to persevere. Just because we fail once does not mean that the battle or fight or whatever it is that we want to have pushed is over, that perseverance will pay off. We just have to persevere and keep on moving forward. So thank you very, very much for sharing. Okay, maraming salamat to everyone. Thank you to all of our actors. Thank you to everyone that shared, our panelists, our speakers. And we're very, very happy to hear from all of you. Marami, maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. We want to entertain questions from our audience. Thank you for sticking around. This has been a very, very good conversation we've been having over here. For our Q&A portion, I would like to turn you over to RJ Pesador Maliari of Greenpeace to read our question. RJ? Yes, um, in the interest of time and because of the panel that are already answered most of the questions for the Q&A, thank you for helping us um, actually answering those questions. I will just um, ask one question for Karen, or for Karen Shai. It came from Ann Angala and the question is, how can you use your profession as filmmaker in your advocacy? So Karen, can you answer? Right. Um, so, uh, as a filmmaker, or specifically a documentarist, since that's kind of what I try to do as often as possible, um, I try my best to um, show the issues that we have and what we can do about them in a way that would be engaging to most of the youth, because um, it's not a secret, I should say, that the attention span nowadays is a lot shorter. And yeah, uh, people want to be engaged. And especially with the onset of social media, it's kind of like, uh, no matter how many videos you put out there, if they're too long, if they're too boring, nobody's gonna really care about them. So um, combining what I know uh, from, how, from when I studied marine biology, plus my uh, profession in film, I want to reach as many people as possible using especially Facebook and YouTube as a platform because it is a fact that Filipinos are the top Facebook users in the world. So we could use that to our advantage. That is the, I think that would be the best way for me to use my expertise or, or my profession in film 
to aid in my advocacy for sustainability. Yeah, that's all. Okay. Thank you very much, Karen. All right. So thank you, Karen. Thank you for uh, thank you for answering our Q and A. Uh, as mentioned by RJ, we only have time for one question right now because we are moving. It's the exciting part of our online show. This is our online scorecard. And the purpose of this is for us to rank community and LGU initiatives in addressing the COVID-19 and if we agree that this is what our city needs moving forward. So here are the instructions, everyone. We will be flashing pictures of best practices related to the issues that we've been discussing and you will rank the picture if you want this in your city okay once again this is a uh, once again this is a poll and all you have to do is just click in all right so we're going to be flashing pictures and the very first one is protected and integrated bike lanes okay so again, just click in your answer over there. Yes, do you want it in your city? Are you not sure or do you not want it? So, okay, so protected and integrated bike lanes. Okay, now our next question is urban forests, green spaces where people, where all of us can enjoy. So again, do you want it? Are you not sure, do you not want it? So we had long discussions about these earlier, about the benefits of, of urban forests and green spaces. So just simply click in your answer over there. And finally, our third one is youth and citizens participating in decision making. Yes, a lot of our actors established and mentioned earlier how important it is for youth and citizens to actually take action, to actually take action and to persevere towards getting or towards, uh, towards the appropriate uh, change that we want to see happen. So do you want it? Are you not sure? Or do you not want it? So again, just type in, click in your answers and we will have our polls soon. Okay, again, we would love to hear from all of you. This is a discussion. This is a discussion towards healthy change para po sa ating lahat. So we're going to be mentioning our winners as soon. Oh, and they're here. They're here. Okay, Okay, number one is protected and integrated bike lanes. A hundred percent of you said yes, yes, you want it in your city, you want it in your municipality. That is great to hear. Number two, urban forests, green spaces. One hundred percent of you said yes. One hundred percent of you said yes. I think this is this is great news para po sa ating lahat. And regarding the last one, regarding youth and citizens participating in decision-making, 97% of you said that you do want it. And 3% of you said that, as of the moment, you are not sure. So thank you so much again, everyone. Thank you for our engaging audience. Maraming salamat sa inyong participation. And thank you to everyone that joined in as well today. We are very, very grateful, and that was the last part of our program. Alam niyo po, that was a lot of information that we heard here today. That is a lot to think about, and as they shared earlier, there is a lot to do. When we are ready to take action, there is a lot to do as well. We've had a lot of policy recommendations, and with the help of our youth leaders, our partners from various groups and the government. Uh, for the next steps, Greenpeace will process everything and will reach out again to these stakeholders to make sure that these will be pushed towards a better normal. Once again, a reminder as well, hashtag better normal. Do feel free to, to post these on your social media feeds. And again, this is not the last time that we will discuss these issues. In fact, this conversation series is just one of the first steps. So that wraps up. We want to say thank you once again, everyone, for joining in. Conversations on green and sustainable lifestyles. We hope this session helped you rethink your personal habits. Again, 1% change can make a world of difference, and we can start now. So we hope that this helped you rethink your lifestyles as well and reimagining how our cities could look like in the potential near future. Most importantly, what you as a citizen can contribute in achieving livable and sustainable cities. And now before we go, we invite you all to join the call for a hashtag better normal. By signing the petition, you will find a link. The link is act.gp slash 
better normal. And you should find the link somewhere there. It should be flashed on your screen and you can sign the petition right there. We invite everyone as well to, to move forward with the call towards the hashtag better normal. Feel free to post on your walls, post on your feeds and post on your stories. What can we do to contribute to a better normal? Again, as was mentioned earlier, it is that collective voice that can really spark change para po sa ating lahat. So feel free to hashtag what is your better normal and what can you do to influence and to help towards a better normal. Once again, everyone, we would like to thank our guests. Maraming salamat sa inyong time. Maraming salamat. Thank you very much for sharing your expertise with all of us. And to our audience, to everyone else, catch our next webinar. This is called Moving Towards a Healthy, Just, and Green Recovery. This will be one week from now on June 17 to be aired via Zoom and YouTube. Okay. So ayun lamang po, inviting everyone to turn on their videos. And that is the time that we have for today. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you to all of our viewers. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye. Stay safe and God bless folks. Thank you.